Hi, I'm John Norman. For more than 36 years, I've been fighting fires, saving lives, and protecting property. I want to thank those who've come before me, and I hope to honor their dedicated service by passing on to you the keys to succeed as a fire officer. My service with the FDNY has had a great influence on what you're about to watch, but I assure you these principles are universal and can be applied wherever you serve. The Fire Officer's Handbook of Tactics DVD series will take you through all the necessary steps to help you become a great fire officer. Not only will it give you the strategy to be a better leader, it will give you the tactics to accomplish your mission. As a modern fire officer, we see new technologies come on the scene every year. Some of these technologies improve our response times, while others only add more to our to-do list as a leader. In this presentation, we'll be discussing water supply. Water is a very important subject for the fire service, for without it, we cannot extinguish most fires. Why should we devote an entire 30-minute program to just water supply? The answer to that question is very simple. A good fire officer needs to know how to ensure there is an adequate volume of water to extinguish fire, or recognize those situations where limited volumes will not be able to extinguish it and must be used for exposure protection. Volume is our concern here. We need to make sure that we have the proper amount of water, not just pressure, to put out the fire. Water pressure is important. It gives us the reach and penetration we need to get to the source of the fire. But getting the right volume of water on the fire to absorb the BTUs it is generating is what actually puts the fire out. So we must ensure there is a steady supply of water arriving on the fire ground to beat back the enemy. We must then know something about water and its characteristics. That is why we're going to discuss hydraulics. Hydraulics is the study of how we move water on the fire ground. We can talk about hydraulics all day long. In fact, I am well versed in the language and technical understanding of hydraulics, as I was a fire protection engineer as well. I didn't always wear a white hat. There are many formulas and calculations relating to discharge flows, friction loss, K factors, and such. For this discussion, we'll talk about the basics of hydraulics and its practical application to the fire ground and to water supply. There will be some technical information that you need to understand if you're going to make the right decisions about water supply in the heat of battle. We will explore water pressure, expressed as pounds per square inch, or PSI, and how we measure it on the fire ground. We will also go into friction loss and how we measure and compensate for it. We will then apply those topics to actual gallons per minute or GPM flow rates on the fire ground. First, let's look at the basic principles of water pressure. Before we can understand water supply and delivery systems on the fire ground, we must first understand the nature of water. Water is easy to pump because it cannot be compressed by applying pressure. Therefore, it is also fairly straightforward to calculate its behavior. One cubic foot of water will occupy virtually one cubic foot of space regardless of pressure. And one cubic foot of water weighs about 62.5 pounds and has a volume of 7.5 gallons. These facts are the basis for understanding how water will act on a fire ground. Now let's look at six of the characteristics of water as it pertains to pressure. One, fluid pressure is perpendicular to the surface on which it acts. This is what allows a gauge to measure the pressure of water in a tank. 